Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is going to be my Avatar Last Airbender Book 1 Episode 5 video, The King of Omashu. As much as this is an episode about King Boomy, I think we all remember it mostly as the first appearance of Cabbage Corp. Poor Cabbage Man, all he wants to do is sell those cabbages. In the context of the series, I feel like they made this episode wanting it to be able to exist on its own. Like, you could, you could air it anywhere and people would be able to pick it up pretty fast. Just like a fun side adventure. But I feel like the serialized episodes, like the ones that tie back to the main plot a lot more, are more rewarding. So just careful for spoilers as we start talking about top five moments and specific stuff from the episode. Although I feel like you guys have probably all seen these by now. Starting with number five, welcome to Omashu, city of super slides and rock candy. I'd say it's also the birthplace of Cabbage Corp, but I, I don't think that we know that Cabbage Corp originated here. I think the way they wove that into the DNA of the show is that there's always been a Cabbage Corp at one time or another. Like it's a family company that gets passed down from parent to child over and over. There's actually a whole lot going on here. Like when they make that opening reveal, it looks a lot like Omashu might be built on the back of a lion turtle. I do think whenever they made the Avatar 1 episodes, they, they visually tried to call back to that. But Omashu itself is in the wrong place to have been built on a lion turtle. So if you remember during the Avatar 1 episodes, the lion turtle that Avatar 1 lived on top of was the firebending one. So that was probably located somewhere in the modern day Fire Nation. The earthbending lion turtle was actually in the desert. So it'd be located much closer to Wanshi Tan's library. And then we finally meet the illustrious Cabbage Man, who is just getting dumped on by everyone. Sometimes I wonder, when, when Mike and Brian first started telling jokes like this, this is book one, so this is the first time they ever did this with Cabbage Man, I, I wonder if they felt like it was so funny that they just kept doing it. It takes so long to make episodes like this, to animate episodes, that they wouldn't have gotten any feedback from the fandom at the time. Like maybe by the time they got to book three, when they were on book three, they probably had an idea of, of stuff that people really liked. But by the time people were watching this episode, they were probably already rolling through production on book two. I feel like Aang's disguise here too is one of his better looking disguises. We'll call this the Appa hair mustache disguise. The interior of the city is pretty cool looking. Obviously the first thing you think when you see this is theme park. Like is this a water slide? Is it a roller coaster? I don't understand. I feel like if Avatar had become as big a hit as Spongebob is, they, they totally would have turned that into a theme park. Moving on to number four, meet King Boomy. What a coincidence that this person happens to be named just like Aang's future child. I also like that they made Aang's son act a lot like King Boomy. Both of their characters were way over the top, just in the best possible way. This is where the episode starts to drag a little too. I mean, the premise is solid. Aang goes back to a familiar place, reconnects with an old friend. But I feel like there's just not enough going on in this episode. They do get in a couple nice jokes. I really liked all the coughs that they added after the bad jokes. Like the running bad jokes are pretty good. Usually that's Sokka's territory, but Boomy landed some pretty good bad jokes. Kangaroo Island, for instance, that's actually, that's a real island off of Australia. Some of the logic with the feast and the trials is a little fuzzy, but watching it now after having watched all of Avatar, it's a lot funnier because you see these moments where Boomy's like, I'm the most powerful bender you'll ever meet. And it's like, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, well, yeah, till you meet the blind bandit. Or like when they get locked up overnight here. It's like, where is Toph when you need her? Oh wait, we haven't met her yet. Like I said, I think this episode was designed more to tell some of Aang's backstory and be like a fun side adventure. But, but I feel like it's just a bunch of gags kind of mashed together with like a, a moral at the end. And it, it didn't quite work out the way they wanted it to. But it's still fun to watch. On to number three, Aang has to get Boomy's key. This was actually my favorite challenge, even though their fight later in the episode was a bigger deal. Aang has to find a way to get to the key without being able to waterbend or earthbend. This is where we get some real character progression. Usually what you want is to have the characters face a challenge that they can't overcome without gaining new knowledge or learning a new ability. So I guess you could say that Boomy's challenges were one, to just have some fun with Aang and mess with him a little bit, and two, to try and teach him something of value. It was kind of the same deal whenever Korra went to learn from Toph in the swamp. Earthbenders, very powerful, very good teachers, but just super mean. I kind of wonder how much Toph's character flowed from the DNA of Boomy's character. Like they both have a really cynical, sarcastic sense of humor, and they both love to play pranks on people. I think part of the reason why Toph works so much better as a character is just because they had that much more time to figure the series out. Like this is still book one, the first couple of episodes. So they're still trying to figure the characters out, figure out the tone of the show. But on to number two, Aang versus Boomy. This is a really good fight, but it also makes you really appreciate the level of complexity that they got to in Legend of Korra. Like watch this fight and then go watch Korra vs. Kuvira in the book 4 finale. Aang does show off a couple new moves like the air tornado for instance. But there's this really cool Boomy ability that I don't remember us ever seeing again. So this move here, whenever he falls backwards into the sand and then earth bends himself up to the platform underneath the ground. 
does anybody remember them using this move again? Part of me thinks that, that they saw this on screen and thought that it might be a little too powerful so that whenever they got the Toph, they're like, okay, she'll be really strong, but we're going to depower her a little bit so that she's more balanced with the other characters. It's like playing Warcraft when they have to nerf DPS for a certain class just because certain abilities, certain combos give them too much more power, give them unfair advantages over other classes. Mike and Brian made a really big deal about bending making sense in the Avatar universe. Like they wanted it to flow from a logical place. So like even, even the Avatar can push themselves so hard that they die from exhaustion. I think they said that that was just their response to watching other cartoons and, and seeing characters use powers in ways that didn't make sense at all within the internal logic of the show. You guys can let me know if you agree, but if you watch other animated shows or other anime shows, do you feel like they're just as internally consistent with the way powers work? Sometimes it feels like the only shows that really take themselves that seriously are dramas, and most cartoons are not dramas. And finally, my number one moment, Aang finally reconnects with Boomy, and he reminds him about his mission to learn all the elements and defeat Ozai. Whenever Boomy mentioned Ozai's name, it's actually the first time that the Fire Lord was given a name in the Avatar series. You have to remember, this is only episode 5, so it actually hadn't been on for that long. Plus, they get to go on another sled ride, smash some more cabbages. They actually use Cabbage Man three times in this episode. I feel like that's still the record. Let me know though, what was your favorite moment from the episode? And here's my big question for you. Do you feel like when they made this episode, they hadn't quite nailed down the show yet? Like by the time they got to the end of book one, the beginning of book two, they just, they'd figured things out just a little bit better. That's why you have to give them a giant high five. Just because all of this was built from the ground up. All the lore, all the mythology. It wasn't like they were adapting Tolkien or some other book or a, even a comic book. That's why you don't see that a lot nowadays, just because it's so hard to build original IP. And not even that, if you can sell a network on an original idea, then you have to build the universe out. That takes multiple seasons to do. Like a lot of times, usually if I'm talking about a show with someone else, I'll tell them to start in like season two or season three, because usually by that time the writers have nailed the characters down, and, and the, the show itself works a lot better. Of course, then you have some shows that get to like seven, eight, nine seasons, and they totally jump the shark, and everything goes off the rails. That's actually another really good question too. When, for you guys, did Avatar The Last Airbender become an amazing show? Like, were you hooked from episode one, or did it take you to book two till you, like, fully drunk in the Kool-Aid? Just for me, making YouTube videos has, has really changed the way that I interact with shows, because it's much more of a social experience now. And when I was first watching a lot of this stuff, I didn't have Twitter, I didn't have a YouTube channel, I was, I was kind of experiencing it in a vacuum all by myself. I don't think Tumblr even existed then, and that's really where the Avatar fandom lives. It just once there is a community of people for you to interact with, like we do have right now, it's just so much easier to get into a show just because you have that shared social experience. That actually reminds me, since this is a new Avatar video, there's a new round of the giveaway. Congratulations to Lumpy Rocks. You are the winner of this week's Amazon gift card. It's just a $20 Amazon gift card, so please message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact info. Because we don't have Constantine anymore, because it's not ticking up my Friday nights, it should be easier for me to get out weekly Avatar videos again. We're kind of rolling into Game of Thrones territory, but that's like a Sunday thing, so that's not going to get in the way of this. Don't worry though, regardless of when new Avatar videos post, I'll still be doing giveaways in each one, so no worries there. While you guys wait for the next one, you can click here for the, the rest of my Avatar bonus videos, and you can click here to learn all about the Black Panther movie in Phase 3, in Marvel Phase 3. Thank you so much for watching, so let's all high five. I'll see you guys tonight.